to be or not to be. Ooh. And to our lovely huh? viewer, um, uh, you can uh, feel free to uh, also comment uh, in the chat box there if you'd like anybody. Uh, you can give them a rose uh, to use for later, or you can throw a tomato. Tomatoes help me if you think the situation should be just a little more challenging. It can move uh, a DC value up a notch. It can uh, make, uh, or it can make. Uh, a failed roll uh, of an enemy, suddenly a successful hit. So please feel free to join in in the chat if you do feel, uh, if you do feel so inclined. And so, we will begin, starting with our recap. Our heroes thought they were part of a peaceful envoy. Come to parley with the Republic of Ironhold. But the ship they were to meet sunk our hero's vessel and sold them all to an orcish slaver, Gorl, captain of the infamous ship, the Urchin. Did a documentary on urchins. <clears throat> no one watched it. Skip, the young son of Gorham, helped the crew escape their shackles, and with his help they managed to take the ship. But Gorham would not be taken prisoner. He escaped the brig and caused considerable damage to the ship, forcing our heroes to make... Oh... Oh god, my head... Port... Port... Mm. Port... Sorry... At Sinker's Wharf, the very destination that they were to be sold. The pirate factions that run the wharf... Or, <clears throat> were not the, the, the best of terms. Brewing tensions allowed the party protection under the pirate king Peaches. Really? That's his name. All right then. A grizzled old orc who wanted to see the end of the slave trade being run by the other factions. The reckless black marauders and the ruthless Uxora. Oh God, that tasted horrible. But on a pirate island, the party had to prove their mettle if they wanted Peach's protection. They were challenged to take the Red Fox, a privateer vessel from Ironhold, as a way of proving their loyalty. However, the Yerkstora took precautions to ensure that the urchin would fail, soiling their cannon powder and making repair jobs that would not last. Yet, in, in a favorable turn of events, the first mate of the ship was willing to negotiate with the Urchin. She would help them subdue her captain if they gave her command of the Red Fox in turn. A fearful battle ensued and the captain of the Red Fox fell. First mate became captain, and as a bonus, the, uh, the, the Urchin received the centaur and cleric Selena, who was seeking passage to Ironhold, but wanted off the red box, and just as all seemed well, they they caught the sign of smoke rising from Sinker's Wharf. With Peach's new friends gone, the two factions seized the opportunity to take the Pirate King down. Aided by the firepower of the box, our champions were able to sink the wharf's defenses. A big point. For while, Guile, and Cannon Fire, the party fought their way to Peach's Tower, where they came face to face with the Yukstora manager, I mean leader, and their intent was revealed. It seems the Republic of Ironhold is expanding, and without the slave trade, there is not enough money to attract the free vessels or pay the mercenaries. If they don't put up a fight, the whole sea of stores will be owned by Ironhold, and I will never bring my business here ever again. Sinker's Wharf is doomed. In the Battle of Cutlery, Stale Bread, and Flaming Grog, the Yukstora were defeated and Peaches rescued. The factions took their ships and fled for ports unknown, restoring Peaches as king of the island. Our heroes enjoyed their rest before heading on to their next adventure. <laughs> With the ship restored and supplies full, our heroes met their new crew. From half-deaf cannoneers, timid treasures, and young entrepreneurs, 
Peach's pirates were put to the test when the urchin, besieged by stormy seas and a hungry sea drake, <laughs> skip bravery, piloted, skip bravely pirated the ship. But then a wave broke the bow and washed Lim Alexander and some of the crew overboard. Mac and Blast would have met their would have met their maker if not for Selena. As everyone seemed to bleak, seemed as everything seemed bleak, Aragon caught the beast with a ballistic shot, tethering it to the anchor. As the beast struggled against the weight, Blast ended this igniting ended this by igniting a powder keg, and he blew the beast to smithereens. <laughs> And the most of the ship, along with it! Oh, it's chaos, and I love it! <laughs> with only one mass, the urchin limped into the nearest port, Lido's Island. Skip cautioned them that their vessel was known there. It seemed the lumber trade from the Lido's merchants was a popular target for his father and the other pirates. As feared, the urchins was recognized and commandeered by the port authorities upon arrival. However, thanks to Max's silver tongue, Yay. he managed to sway the authorities with the party's tail. While the ship was still forfeit, they were free to roam as visitors. The town has seen better days. The homes looked empty and the fields barren. A great gate was being constructed around the center of town, and as they entered the tavern, in the midst of a town hall meeting, they soon learned why. Werewolves. Seeing an opportunity, Alexander proclaimed to the entire crowd that the party could solve their problems, and if they were successful, perhaps this would help them bother for their ship. <coughs> Oh, well done, everybody. Well done. That. <laughs> uh, all right. So, Christina, Tom, uh, do you know who Charlie was? Or give an approximate guess. I was going to say John, um, Jack Sparrow. Similar. I was going to say Keith Richards. But same same thing essentially. <laughs> yeah, I'll Charlie, I'll give you the rose. It's close enough. It was David Attenborough, but he's shown up drunk for the filming. <laughs> oh, oh you got yeah. I would, I, I would like to point out if I wanted to sound like Jack Sparrow, I could Nice bring that up there. Yeah. <clears throat> and <laughs> and now over to Ryan. Did we get who Ryan is? Or possibly where he is? <laughs> Feel free to jog their memory, Ryan, if need be. <laughs> did, did he die? Did what happened? No. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? No guesses? Oh, I was waiting oh, no, for him sorry. to do it again. Yeah, okay. same. Ryan, well, now, they I, want I an scream. encore. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't believe they didn't figure it out. I'm just, I'm just stuck out here by myself, and I'm really scared. <laughs> See, I imagine like Rick from Rick and Morty, but like in the middle of the Antarctic, <clears throat> trying to radio in on the news. Okay, you I got... figured it was Ryan. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. It was just me. He didn't even give me a prompt. <laughs> no, 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 no! I figured it was, it was Ryan's first day on the job doing the weather report, but it's like, hey, Ryan, you have to go go out and build this tornado. Ryan's like, sure, I'll be a team player. Then once Ryan got there, it was instant regret. I mean, that's okay, exactly you got it. it. Weather newsman in a tornado. We got it. All right, oh, and wow. I did it. I'm a good boy. <laughs> and on to. Kayla, about something about bringing your, your business to Sinker's Wharfs. Kayla, please feel free to jog their memory. I will not be bringing my business back to Sinker's Wharf ever again. Let me speak to your manager. <laughs> <laughs> the high school version of a Karen. 
Yeah, she's a Karen. <laughs> oh, oh, really? That's it? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just. <laughs> oh. And, uh, Kurt, can we get a little recap of your tedious laughter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I guess so. I hope everyone enjoyed it, though, because I know I sure did. <laughs> Obviously, he's a wicked witch. Oh, wicked, but a witch, not quite. Tom? I thought he was the Ice King from a, from Adventure Time. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, but I love that, too. Uh, that should be a prompt <laughs> another so time. Uh, Kurt, care to reveal who you were? Would y'all care for a red balloon? We all float down oh, here. Oh, you're it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see and it now. I hear it. Curtis, give us a little, uh, uh, a little encore of uh, your lovely speech. Back away from me, demon. I know you're the one from the sewers, and I swear I will destroy you in the name of Satan, mm, uh, the Lord. <laughs> no? Oh, I uh, say. Well, well, yeah. well, well, well. At first, I thought it was I thought it was Don King, but then I realized he's just that really good Southern bat. Baptist preacher that you just want to hang on to their every word until they're done talking. <laughs> Do you not That's hear it. my calling? Well, like, well, like for the Church of Satan. <laughs> yeah, apparently you just pulled that out of nowhere. <laughs> um, there's some context to that because I did a, I did a, a, I'll try to, I'll try to shorten it down. There's a, there's a web comic called God's Lost Mercy where it, I was. I was uh, making a trailer of his comic and mm. the, the priest is actually a demon and the Lord wasn't God. It was Satan. S and mm. he had this like really Southern accent and, and it was like, okay, this, this, this was, it was a fun role, but that's why I, I kind of did the whole Satan thing. Sorry. Sorry <laughs> for anyone who's religious in here. I love that. Uh, it was a fun bit. Alrighty. Uh, 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 so um, everybody except uh, Pennywise, I'm afraid, will get their rose. But don't worry, Kurt, there'll be plenty of time for you to earn a rose later, as I'm sure, because you are um, a man of antics and blowing up my ships. I, 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 I made him a rose that's made out of tomatoes, if that's okay. <laughs> Good, I'm hungry. All right. Edible arrangements. All <laughs> right, and so... Uh, Curtis, please feel free to get that playlist, uh, going. And... You... Aww. Okay. Okay? Second. Hold on. Okay, Wait, no worries. Friggin' <sighs> jukebox. There it is. Yes, let All me right. hear your best cats while we wait. Best cats? Me and meow. Me and meow. 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 There's a cat. Meow. It. <laughs> Very that good. Was track. supposed to be a cat. I love you. <laughs> so, as everybody remembers, <laughs> thanks to our lovely recap, we had just ended off with a town hall meeting that had been interrupted with, as uh, Alexander had offered you all up to uh, the townsfolk to help them with this issue of lycanthropes. And there we resume. As a parent pulls her child back who is very enthusiastic about wanting willy willy fast. I'm willy willy fast. Mm -hmm. One of the other one of the other stout townsmen who's got the look of a an off-duty guard about him. His sword still fastened to his belt. He's wearing a padded shirt, but and you can see the indent left by the helmet that he was probably been wearing for a week straight as he strolls up to you. And he looks at you all, red in the face, stern of eyed, with a big heavy beard still filled with the foam of fresh beer. You think you can deal with this lycanthrope problem? Santa? 
<laughs> what? No. No! Many have come before you and tried, you know. You, it's not so easy, that's why we're building this bloody wall. I'm the no. one that's buying the money for the wall. <laughs> Shut up, Dottie! We know you're not good for it! And they throw something at the man with the book, who had been <laughs> bleating on in the background. <coughs> oh! It's the, it's the greatest... It was the greatest throw ever. And I did this in. <clears throat> well, sure. who's speaking for you? That small fellow's suddenly very quiet. You all notice that Alexander, <laughs> something has come over him, and he's quavered. Quavered? Quivered? I don't know. He has begun... S he has let his head sink into his hand. He closes his eyes, and he begins muttering something as if in great pain. Oh no, it's the Drake's poison. We need we need ten gold right now to fix him. Quick, give me! I, I ain't falling for that again! You there! And he points to Aridin. You were stuttering just before I cut you off. What were you going to say? Oh, um, I was just wanted to, um, honestly, if you could just pretend for a moment that I've been, I don't know, tuning you out for the better part of an hour. It's just a recap uh, as to, um, what exactly you want? I didn't, we didn't want anything. You all started saying, <sighs> for months now, we've been losing people to the damn lycanthropes. They've been coming out of the woods and we're pulling back and building a wall. We've not willing to spend a penny more on more mercenary types. <laughs> and he spits at the ground. And the inn around gasps collectively at his audacity. It's like, sir, but we need... Quiet! And with a shrewd, pinched face, he sneers at you. What is it that you come here to do? Hmm? He's... Nothing. Well... A ship, a ship lived into port. You're the ones in trouble. Hey, you guys kind of took our the, ship. You're the Ooh. ones with the lycanthrope problem. You are the ones who commandeered our ship, broken though it was. And it yeah. sounds to me like you haven't done a damn thing for months. And you just now decide, I'm being attacked from outside the city. So maybe we should build a wall. Why exactly are you in charge? I'm not in charge! Rune's the one in charge! Oh, why are you screaming at us? Go drink a beer. Yeah. <laughs> Who, who's... Right, who's in charge? I'm gonna power move, look him in the eyes, go to the ground, <laughs> look up that spit. And I'm gonna be like, I'm Ew. Now. Ah! ah! And horrified... And with collective uh, gags from the, <laughs> the entire end. I won! You win, you creep! And then you he'll scamper off. I don't know where he's been. Why would you. Well, he's been here. He, he, got, he got you there. Oh, good. Look around and tell me how that's better. I. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying. You guys all look better by comparison. Mac, stop making sense. You, random person, who's in charge? Who? Uh, well, you mean the chair of Portman, and you mean the inn, because, uh, oh, oh, uh, Hampton's, uh, the, the inn master, but if you, you probably want to talk to Rune or the harbor master if you're just talking general hierarchy. I mean, Rune, we Rune are sort of uh, an established commune. Uh, we have, like, a right. bit of a. Uh, it's a light democracy, what we got going on here. It's sort right, of like so houses get to speak and... Um, to Rune, then. Um, oh, yeah, you the want to talk to Rune? Oh, well, why didn't you say so? Yes. Yeah, he's uh, the catfolk uh, up in the Manor Hill, you know. Uh, 
we just, you know, sort of let him move in. He's a bit of a mover shaker, and uh, yeah, so uh, he's uh, sort of the talk of the town, yeah, and uh, he's, uh, oh, he's right kind then. of doing things and now. He, yeah, so. He's in charge then. Yeah, he's, he's in charge. Kind of like the mayor type thing. Mm-hmm. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, so we're going to go talk to him then. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's late, so you might want to uh, think about maybe. Uh, this is a nice gesture. Maybe take uh, uh, a, a couple pints or something to go. Just uh, he's uh, he can be a little um, rough around the edges. Uh, you know, quick to show his claws, but uh, you know, you treat him nicely. He's bound to chat with you. He's been through some rough stuff, you know. And, uh, being an outsider, or anyway. But... Thank you. Did you say he was a cat person? Oh yeah, he's one of them cat yeah. folks, you know. <gasps> I got this. I take out my wrap. Don't worry, guys. I got a present. No, no, no. That's. I mean, I, I mean, at this point, it might work. I, I don't think it will more. Um, thank you, very much. Yeah. And, uh, just be going. All right. So. Uh, do you acquire anything before setting out? As the inn goes um, back to business as usual. Just go to the bar. Do you have a, a bottle of um, some form of ale? Maybe. Mm-hmm. And a rather rotund halfling with a face just as pinched and soured as that other awful man you were speaking to puts a... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, puts a bottle, a corked uh, bottle. I have a lot of lovely nouns and adjectives today. A corked bottle up onto the bar, and like that'll um, cost you six it? copper. It's the good All stuff. Right. Okay, right. I'll just um, I'll give you a um, give you a silver piece for your trouble. Oh, well, thank you kindly. Um, so you right, now have one quiet. bottle of ale, Richard, and the townsfolk all whisper about you as you wander off. And Phelan, with your keen eyes, just as you're about to leave, you catch something. There's, and give me a uh, perception roll, if you please. As your elven eyes pierce through the cl- the, cr- the crowd, the crowd pierce through the crowd. Holy hell! Superman X-ray eyes. <clears throat> Kayla, you lock eyes <coughs> with an elderly woman in a cloak, sitting in the crowd of people around a table. As people jostle about, laughing, slapping each other on the knee, and whispering about you all, she locks eyes with you. And just as you all leave, you catch something about her. Something about her look possesses you. You can't quite figure out what it is. And you realize as you leave, somebody asking for your help with nothing but their eyes. And as you all move along to, and just as quickly as you look back, suddenly she is gone. And as you all leave to go to the manor house, we quickly cut back to another one of our improv games where (coughs) um, Skip, played by Curtis, and uh, Humpa, which was uh, (laughs) one of the uh, bosons played by our own Kurt Combrink. And Kurt, if you uh, need a quick jogging of the memory, um, Humpa, sorry, I'm just looking at my board over here. He was uh, kind of a, he was a young uh, Scotsman. Uh, At least that's (laughs) how I based it based on your uh, character in action. But, so the two of you are arguing with the harbor master, who will be played by Kayla. Now, Kayla, um, they are what? They are um, 
protesting that their boat is being stripped and used for parts. And you, all you're willing to tell them is that the boat is now property of Rune and the island, and they can go suck an egg. Uh, Skip, Humpa, if you guys can try to find some way to uh, get some help or um, find a way to save your ship or at least save your, find some work for your crew in the meantime, we will uh, begin. I mean, I don't know what you want me to say. It's, you come into my port, what do you expect? It's my boat now. I'd like to know how you're thinking that it's your boat, boat bloody hell. Captain, how, how, how can this get any worse? The big ugly one with the crappy looking teeth blows it half to hell, and now we have to deal with this. It's not your boat, it's a flat out stealing, what the hell? Oh, well, what you great. expect when you come into my territory and just plop yourselves in? Who do you think you are? that I'm the son of your most hated enemy who's coming here in peace and in a lot of distress. Yeah. I would think you could have at least talked about this before you decided to commandeer at least what is my ship. Such as it is. Whatever's left of it, of course. Well, if you're that bloody bastard son, I want nothing to do with you even more. What do I do? Yeah. Do you know what it's like to be his little whipping boy? Yeah. I mean, I had to help him sometimes whip him and everything. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, it was a great way to work out some of my anger, but just, Jesus Christ! Just, the, the boat's not yours! I don't know what you're getting at, but the sob story won't work on me. Kayla, as much as the sob story doesn't work on you, you do feel a little bit of remorse that... Although, the ship is yours now, and you're not going to hand it over. Um, chances are, these people, like a lot of the people on Lido's Island, are going to end up being permanent residents. So, you find it in you to think about ways that they might be able to uh, help out other uh, fishermen, or you, you're now going to offer them jobs around town. Try to come up with some jobs that might uh, suit this pirate crew. Look, I mean, if you're if you're here, you might as well make yourselves useful. Um, we definitely have, you know, plenty of stables that could be cleaned out that I think would be sorted for you lot. Digging up the muck, yeah? Ah. And then maybe if you do enough good enough job, maybe maybe I'll think about giving your boat back. Now is this based on time limit or simply when you feel like it? I mean, it's my island, it's on my terms. But what what's even your goal There's here? Why are you even here? <laughs> Did you see the ship? Yeah. It's not like we had anywhere else to go. Well, trust me, if I one, didn't, really. if I had a chance to not be here on your island, I would have gladly taken it. But right now, we we have barely anything to eat. We have injured. We have so many other issues that we're dealing with. And I didn't think that, well, we'd be taking the only thing that... I actually earned. Just simply because you don't like my father. And right, he is a right bastard. Absolutely. But I could have at least worked something out. Well. There is something you might be able to help us out with while you're here. Good job. All is. Yes. So, here on this island, we've been having a bit of a problem, you could say. There have been lichen rocks roaming about, and they're yeah. just terrorizing the town. 
irons. I, I, I'm sorry. Did, did you... Larkins, you say it like... Like wolves with the teeth. Humper, you have no arr. idea what a lycanthrope is. Cap, cap, Skip, what, 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 that what? makes your skin crawl. Cap, what, what's a lycanthrope? Remember that one time we went to that island and there was a lot of wolves and it, it bit you on your hind side? It, it's like that, except it's the size of Vlas. And, and probably a lot meaner. Oh, but you can just go ahead and screw up with that. I'll go shove the shit in the, uh, yeah. I might try to deal with that. <laughs> nope. No, thank you very much. Nope. Nope. Right. Nope. I already have to sit. I already have to sit leading. Nope. Not happening again. And we will move on from that scene. Kayla, the harbor master, as you see, a look of dread wash over Skip's face. <laughs> and the, his stalwart crew <laughs> retreat back and accept the stable job. You know that um, help might be harder to find. Now we go hey. cut back to our main party. <laughs> Hold on. And he's already help. doing the Hi. job. I'm Nathan Fielder. Oh, Fielder don't start with him. Don't this. bring him into this. <laughs> we cut back to our <laughs> adventuring party as they're uh, walking up a gravel trail up to a rather <coughs> stately looking white manor perched on a hill. And I will take perception checks from everybody. Um, main party, you don't have to roll, Curtis. I keep thinking you're talking about me. Yeah. Oh, that time I was talking about you. Sorry. It's so hard when there's two Curtis. I'm the sorry. <laughs> Phelan, you stare at the ground as this image of that woman in the inn plays through your head. You're not quite sure what to make of it, but you sense that there was some trouble, and you wonder when you're going to see her again. Eridan, looking around, you can see the muck surrounding this place, these barren fields. It takes you a little bit to figure it out, but... This is, you know, runoff and residue from that happens when swaths of forest are all mowed down so quickly and without forethought. And you can see, it, you start to wonder, or you start to wonder at the source of their problem and if maybe lycanthropes, it might have something to do with the lack of forest that has you know, suddenly struck the island. Vlas, you notice pretty much the same thing as Erid, and you having, you know, uh, with your roguish lifestyle, a lot of times you had to run out into the woods and you watch slowly as the encroaching town would slowly uh, take over the forested areas and it would leave behind muck and this terrible stench and a lot of displaced wildlife. Mac. It's a pretty night. The stars are out, and there is a waxing gibbous moon hanging in the sky. You think wow, you see I a know bat. that word. You know that word. And as you guys arrive at the stately house, you are, of course, greeted by two guards who are at the front of, of a short iron fence. They hold out their spears. They are dressed in mail. And they scrutinize you. Both human. What brings you to the manor? Speak to Rune. I have a rat. Yeah. yeah. What they said. Right. Rune's not taking visitors. And he just... I have beer. Wow, what are they busy with? There's nothing here! Yeah. Eridan, you hold up the beer. Make a diplomacy check, please. Be good. Actually. <laughs> well, why didn't you sleep with that? To go with. <laughs> uh, you can keep the rat. Um, that might actually be considered offensive. Yeah, I figured it would be. Thank you for rats to everyone, though. 
<laughs> it was a nice thought about that. I love friends. <laughs> All right, and so the guard um, walks you up to the manor house and knocks on the door, and after a moment, um, a very old-looking gray cat opens the door, whispers something. The guards, he got some people here to see a room. They uh, brought him a gift. Right, I'll go see if he's available. <laughs> and this old cat, missing an eye and an ear, scrutinizes the lot of you. Cat or cat folk? Cat folk. Thank you. Scrutinizes you. Now, uh, Phelan and Mac, neither of you have ever seen cat folk. They are strange and interesting to you because you both know house cats and other types of cats, but here is a humanoid cat. And he goes away from the door for a moment and you're waiting outside for some time when the butler comes back. Run. As you will. Rune will see you. And Thank he you. leads you all in. Yeah, I told you I wasn't busy. <laughs> Once inside, the first thing you notice is the smell. There is... You can... It wafts in your nostrils a strong floral aroma. But this is a smell you can see as well because the smoke in this room <coughs> is quite thick. It is a... The state house is somewhat interesting in style compared to the rest of the town. Um... Vlas and uh, Aridin, please give me some society checks as you two come from uh, an affluent neighborhood, so you might be able to recognize some details. Nope. Uh, Aridin, <laughs> you never much cared for decor, but Vlas, you know having busted into the Lord, uh, the Lord Matron's treasure vault and you know, staking out her home, um, you briefly remember that time you were disguised. You catered a party just so you could case out the joint. It's very reminiscent style. This, these nice columns, the open concept, um, the smattering of candle chandeliers. But you notice this is something that whoever Rune is, he doesn't much care for the upkeep on it, as it's all the candles are not but wax puddles. There are cobwebs here and there. The floors look like they've had you know, uh, ample opportunities to be repolished, but some rune obviously isn't the type to deal with that sort of thing. And when you go into the main chamber, there is rune with an exotic looking pipe. Now, uh, Ryan and Kayla, give me society checks, please. Okay. <coughs> I know my weed. <laughs> no, I don't. That's a low, low bonus. Oh yeah. <laughs> I eat rats. What do you, what do you think I know? <laughs> Reds are <laughs> No, I'm sorry. How do I do it? That's alright. Uh, on the skills tab, you should see um, about uh, three quarters down, you're going to see a skill called uh, Society. Uh, you've yes. got, like, no... That doesn't make sense. You should have... That is an intelligence stat. So, yeah. Sorry. For some reason, we missed that. Um... Click on the double click on the plus two. Okay, yeah, so it is, uh, you've, because of your Fey heritage, you've seen different types of pipes and stuff, but this glass, tall glass 
pot that he's smoking from uh, a retractable pipe <laughs> is new and novel to you. Ah, it seems I have <laughs> visitors. And you all look uh. upon a young cat folk, bluish gray fur with keen yellow eyes, and quite a nasty scar running from his left ear down his chin, where no hair grows. Please, uh, have a seat. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. You are welcome. I'll and he, uh, put the bottle of beer just on the table and then sit down. <laughs> well, aren't you kind? He pops the cork, sniffs the aroma. I like to treasure it, even though there really is only two types of hooch they serve here. It's one sour, one even more sour. <laughs> but he heartily drinks it. Please, may I offer you any refreshments or... And from this strange smoking uh, crystal, he produces a secondary pipe, if anybody wishes to partake. No, um, I... I was told this may have been offensive, so I'll let I'll let you pick whether I do it or not. But um, I I I have a lot of these as snacks, and I thought you might want one. And I hold out the rat. Ah, uh, no, thank you. Despite, um, uh, antiquated uh. um beliefs about cat folk, we don't often prey on rodents. Uh, to my credit, I've offered this rat to like everyone here, so it's not just you. He he really has. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. Whether we want him to or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, tell Check me, him. what brings you to Lido's Island? The uh, broken collective ship. of... Ah, broken ship. Um, oh, Grandad, how many of us would you say are here because of a broken ship? And the butler kind of leans back. Oh, it's uh, hard to say now. It's, the island was... It was rhetorical, Grandad. But Lido's Island is a collection of uh, flotsam and jetsam who have no other place to go. I welcome you. Hi. Fantastic. So, um, the ship in question is the urchin. Um, Gorham is no longer in the picture. The son, Skip, he's, uh, he's, um, captaining the crew now. Um, fortunately, Gorham is just as much of a pain in the ass to everyone else as he was to us and his son. So, ship is currently being held in dock. Um, we would very much like to have it fixed so we could be on our way. However, that doesn't seem likely in the foreseeable future. We were given some very brief information on some sort of lycanthrope problem you're having. Mm. Any of this true? He stares at you all for a good long moment, taking a long drag from his pipe. And Vlas, I would like a perception check from you, please. <clears throat> Vlas, you have been in this situation a few more times than uh, your goody two shoed friend Aridin here. You can tell by the reddening of his eyes and that sort of listless look when somebody is just on the cusp of having too much of whatever they're enjoying. You decide to hold that information in case it might be useful come bargaining. <clears throat> Aridin, as you say that, to you he seems quite pensive. And as he leans back, the urchin has been on our 
list to be reclaimed for some time. You see, Gorham was a vicious, vicious orc. That ship is our lumber. That ship... He downed all of our resources. Almost single-handedly, he kept us at bay. We have been waiting a long time to retake the urchin. Mostly as a prize, but also because we need the wood. Like you said with the lycanthrope problem, we are now in a perilous position where most of the lumber on this island has been exported. And when things got just at its scarcest, and we were relying on outside support, Gorham made his move to build his own fleet of ships for himself and the marauders. Oh, wonderful. Fleet, how many So you that ship belong, rightfully belongs to Lido's. We are reclaiming <laughs> that lumber, and we are putting it back to protect ourselves. Cute. And with that... He gives you a very earnest glance. And you find yourselves kind of moved by his story. There is an earnestness in his keen yellow eyes. That's not so much as I'm doing this to screw you guys over. This is, I need to do this for my people. Now hold on, I have something that... I'm really not sure how I can put it into play because the wording's really weird. But I have a fun skill called Lie to Me, where you can use your deception to weave traps to trip up anyone trying to deceive you. If you can engage in conversation with someone trying to lie to you, use your deception DC if it's higher than your perception to determine whether you succeed. Or right. whether they succeed in lying to me. All right. Give me your uh, deception check then, please, Mr. Mac. Right. Yeah! Yeah. Holy hell. So. Wow. Mac, something's not lining up. Like, what do you mean? Like, you still have other, there's other wood. You don't need one ship. Like, he's not lying to you, but it doesn't make sense. Oh, hey, I mean, a ship's like a lot of wood, but I mean, a tree's like even more wood, right? I, I saw trees. They were like under that really good uh, waxing gibbous I saw outside. <laughs> And I How mean, do like, you know that? we we have like half a ship too. There's like nothing on that thing. No, oh, it's weak. And now he turns to Aridan. You are asking about the lycanthropes. Well, that is why we can no longer claim the wood. You see, we've our little <clears throat> town was, or our entire island was made use of during the. Uh, Invasion of Valorum. Ironhold established position here, but in order to push back the Valorum fleet, they needed wood for ships. They raided and pillaged the forests till there was virtually nothing left. And then after the war, they decided they wanted to keep the exports going, and this is, well... And he briefly touches his scar and grits his teeth a little as he concentrates. Well, there's a reason I reside in the manor now. In order to rebuild and try to get even just our fishing boats up, we started logging the old woods. For the longest time, we had sustainable forest practices, but we were desperate, and then they started fighting back. <laughs> of course. So your lycanthropy uh, lycanthro problem started the moment you started to over-lumber from an ancient wood rather than... Hmm. I got a house here bigger than my cave. Use the house. 
I mean, even if you take our ship now, it's not going to help you in the long run. Sure, it'll give you some wood in the short run, but then once the ship's wood's gone, what are you going to do? Uh, Phelan, give me a diplomacy roll, please. Hi, I learned this in business school. It's called a sunk cost fallacy. <laughs> Nathan been with field her away, time. and then he jumps out the window. <laughs> so, when did he walk in? Uh, Phelan, uh, sorry, uh, you did deception. Uh, you, I need uh, diplomacy, which is the opposite of deception. Uh, you are not trying to lie to uh, him. Thought... You are trying to is persuade it? him. Is it really? <laughs> They're right next to each other. The buttons. No, are it's all good. Unfortunately, that was even worse. So uh, you're getting a little, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Phelan, You find yourself getting a little tongue-tied, and he oh. simply stands up and gestures with uh, open paws to the lot of you. Oh my! And says, "I'm so. No, it is." We need every little bit now that we can get. <sighs> Sir, forgive me, I did not ask your name. And he gestures to you, Eridan. Eridan Kalad. Mr. Kalad, we cannot touch the woods anymore, but that has not stopped them from coming. So now every little bit we can spare. We are started taking the farmhouses to build this wall. We are simply out of options. There, Unless you I'm, lot think you can have, march have, into the... Have you tried diplomacy? The werewolves? Let me ask you a question. Would you be interested... Um, if someone set fire to your house and burned down a large chunk of it, and... There was no negotiation, no discourse, nothing. You'd seek recompense, would you not? Of course. Yes. You strip uh, lumber. Charlie, actually, give me a forest. perception check, please. Uh, perception. Fuck. Charlie, yeah. the smoke is really getting to you. Is, this anything else? is anyone else hungry mm -hmm. for no reason? Yeah. Vlas, it occurs to you, you have never seen Aridin, Goody Two Shoes, starting to show signs of being high. <laughs> well. This is quite the part. This is quite the party you got going on here by yourself, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And at that point, Rune cuts you off. Like, yes, we would indeed, but we would need somebody who's able to commune with nature. And we don't have anybody like that here. We don't have any people who are of the forest. We are all a, a tribe of scattered tribesmen washed in from the sea. So well, isn't it your lucky day? Because I'm here now. Most of you. Yay! And said people of the forest, right? I didn't want to assume that just because you were elven that it meant you were from the forest. It just seemed kind of presumptuous. Well, well I appreciate that, but it is. Mac already offered you a rat. You know what? <laughs> We're way past the stereotypes at this point. And you know, my Aridin, at that so. point... <laughs> he did! He offered me a rat! He did. He did. He I'm did. a walking stereotype of kobolds, I've been told. And Vlas, give really me another is. perception check, please. <laughs> Vlas, he has passed that threshold of being have almost having too much to now he's had too much. So if you're of the forest, he points to you, Phelan, you think you might be able to talk to the forest? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Things are coming together now. <sighs> mm -hmm. Okay. 
you um. <laughs> talk to the forest, okay? Mm. And if you can mm -hmm. make the werewolves go away, I don't need your mm. ship. I R think right. you can have your ship. You. So generous. Can we have your ship? Well, let's Matt, don't. don't get ahead. No. Okay, but okay, if you've already started stripping it, though, um, by the time we go and have this conversation, then <clears throat> uh, there, there might not be a ship for us to have. So you need to put the word out to stop with the uh, tearing apart of our ship. I don't think you can find any strippers here. No. Hey, damn. You know, you know what would be absolutely awesome, dude? Why don't you go ahead and outfit our ship? Well, your ship now. Go ahead and outfit it and make it a better war machine than what it was when it was taken, when the wood was used to make it, when they All attacked right. you. Flass, give me a. Uh... <laughs> Give me a diplomacy check, and well, we'll add a plus two to your roll. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so. Yeah. And you see his his uh, dimmer yellow eyes now. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, sorry, Vlas. Uh, I was I'm gonna rolling use something your... for myself. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, Vlas, I'm going to use your uh, perception check as your diplomacy, because that's what I expect you to roll. <laughs> Um, but you're also now, um, there's gotta be some consequence for that one. So your, uh, perception is, uh, you're having a hard time making it out. Like, you're, you've been around people who smoke a lot, and while you're used to a lot of the, you know, the high effects, it is actually starting to impair your vision a bit. So you're feeling a little blurry, but you see him like, yeah, a big ship. We're gonna get a big ship. Yeah. All right, Granddad. Ah, uh, make a note. Tell the harbor not to do any more stripping while on the ship. Um, and we're gonna make it bigger and badder. Yeah. Why is your yes. grandpa role playing as a butler? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> uh, because if I didn't take care of him, he wouldn't take care of himself. Mac, oh, he's a little tell... baby kitty. Mac, what did we tell you? We don't judge. Maybe we judge don't each other all the time. <laughs> we all right. They shouldn't. All right, please. You're all free to stay here tonight as my personal guests. There's, there's like a, there's like a thousand rooms in here. Go. Oh, fantastic. And have at hey, them. Um, um, random, quite random, really weird question. Do you have uh, snacks for no reason? Yes. yes! 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 I got yes. snacks. Little Fantastic. kid, hand me that rat. Oh, and yeah. we'll pause there for intermission. <laughs> Fantastic. Rats, I need a snacks. I need a bio break. All right. Be right back, everybody. Where the rats? Very at night we stock at night. Where the rats? know what that is and we're moving on so right. uh to our esteemed judges we will start with christina our uh wonderful performance judge so please uh let us know who are your contenders right now for first and second place and if there's uh, any honorable mentions or uh funny moments that uh you wanted to uh highlight please okay i'm gonna start with the funny moments because i know i'll forget those really quickly um <laughs> So the one time when Ryan said, I have a rat, I died. That was Yay. so funny. It's like, I have an idea, rat. I was like, okay, cool. Um, and then right before we went off break, Charlie had the line of, do you have any snacks? <laughs> like, these, like, these are little things that show a vast perception of the world around you and what's going on and staying true to that. Those, those two moments to me were highlights. I love that. Um, first place right now. Let's see. Let me count these points. Oh, it's so close for second place. Right now, I have Charlie in first place. Um, and 
something that you're doing wonderful is that even when you're not talking, you are keeping character. Like, because I'm watching you guys. Hmm. And the best acting doesn't happen when you speak. The best acting happens when you stand. So the little movements that you guys do, like, that's what I'm watching as well. So, um, Charlie, you're doing a great job of you stay, you sit up so tall and straight and rigid. I'm like, he's judging everything right now with his eyes. And he is trying to find a way to be the hero right now in this very second without even talking. So that's why you're in first place at the moment. Um, and then it's a tie between Kurt and Ryan right now. Like, you guys have one point difference. I'm um, coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> and the tie is broken. Oh, my gosh. Um, Ryan Bushy. has definitely made me laugh more. But Kurt is having all these moments where he's just staying in solid character any time that he opens his mouth. So, yeah. So that's uh, my first and second right now. All right. Thank you very much, Christina. And over to you, Tom. Tom, now, with the improv stuff, of course, it's you don't get all the uh, same dice rolls and skill uses as you do in a battle. But uh, I was trying to take in some of the stuff that we had talked about last time you were here and try to involve more uh, dice rolls just in the... Uh, uh, what was essentially just diplomacy and deception, the cloak and dagger politics. But with what you've had so far, give us uh, your results, your favorite moments, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. So one of my favorite things ever is sessions where it's just solely role playing. Those are my favorite sessions because that allows you to get so deep into your characters. Uh, for a special shout, shout outs, Ryan using his lie to me feet. Yay. Yay, yay, <laughs> stuff like that as a DM makes me so, so, so happy. And also, uh, Kurtz used, used to try to do d diplomacy in order to get the battleship. Really enjoyed that, too. That, as a DM, makes you think on your toes a lot. Um, right now, though, everything is the exact same thing. Charlie, you're, you're top right now. Though Your commitment to staying in character the whole entire time doing everything you can. I am enthralled at points with the way how you're behaving as your character. It is fantastic. And yeah, Ryan, you just have that small edge on Kurt, but Kurt, I've missed blast. I can honestly say that since my last time. And I'm excited to see more of that. So <laughs> that's <laughs> just where we're at right now. You just want me to blow more stuff up. I can't I help it. I if I like explosions. I cheated. <laughs> I actually have diplomacy skills. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, but could you blow something up that isn't me? <laughs> yes, I could actually. I have a ton of fire spells too. I mean, if it makes you feel any better, I tried to pick up Mac and throw him out of the way, but I couldn't because he was too slimy. So I wound up just kicking him across the ship. I'm greasy. To get him out of the way to blast. Yeah, he wasn't. <laughs> I mean, if it makes you feel better. it's my I... natural slime. All right, and so Can I give we one will... quick note before. Oh yeah, sorry. Please. Right before you continue, a note for Kayla, because I know we've been saying a lot for the guys, but Kayla, um, I when you do speak, I listen so hard because you don't you don't have a lot of opportunities to speak when you have these three very loud, rambunctious, energetic gentlemen in the room. <laughs> so, sorry, bravo for finding moments to speak. I would love to hear a lot more of the the ambition and the suspicion because, like, when I read that your character is ambitious, suspicious, and protective, I'm like, ooh, I like that. So mm -hmm. I would love to hear a lot more sus suspicion and ambition. Like th that would add a little bit of a twist to things. So I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, well, that's actually a perfect segue because this next bit was going to actually feature uh, some Phelan and uh, the results wow. of that strange, <laughs> yes! No! <laughs> <laughs> And the results of that strange encounter in the inn. So. Sorry. Sudden itch. And then that moment where you're like, shoot, am I bleeding? Okay, good. Fortunately not. Yeah, please. Haha, <laughs> you have solo story development. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So. You all enjoy... <laughs> You weren't feeling hungry when you came in, but after spending some time here, you realize, yeah, you could go for some food. You could go for, yeah, you know, the you guys, uh, Mac uh, gives his uh, rat to the host, and the butler goes away and comes back with uh, a finely prepared roasted rat. 
and you all enjoy, uh, you realize rat can be kind of tasty when it's properly prepared. And the night goes by. <laughs> the night goes by swimmingly, and you all find yourself in these. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think you could stuff it inside a jerk chicken, but here we are. Yeah. I mean, a lot better than that rat soup Mac made that made huh? me extremely ill. <laughs> I'm gonna go cry now. Listen, listen, that just means there's only room for improvement. You can only go up from there. Yeah. I'm just gonna lean into Mac. Delicate elven constitution. My mom says I was special. <laughs> I hope it chose me. Your mom probably should have taught you how to cook better. This is a delicacy! <laughs> Alright, we're roasting the rat, we're not roasting Mac. <laughs> I don't so, know why we can't do both. You're not allowed to address me. I don't exist in this story. As Shut you... up, Doc! <laughs> Stay out of this! It sh shows what you know. I am very room. high. <laughs> you bastard. All right, so the night uh, waxes on, wanes on, wanes on, uh, well, uh, well into the early hours of the morning, and you all get a uh, good night's sleep in these uh, rather... Uh, rather posh looking beds although they are somewhat underkept and as you all sleep peacefully Phelan there is some uh, a tapping on your window wakes you up oh, dramatic, dramatic pause is, is Skip still on the ship or is Skip he, is on is the ship actually... yeah he is not here oh, if you've got any dramatic music bit. for us minstrel I will happily take that I'm just waiting for the cue they have to go alrighty Phelan, you wake up. There is a, once more a thunk on the glass window pane, overlooking what was probably once a forest. It is hard to see from your position on the bed. Well, I'm gonna take my bow from under my pillow. I'm gonna hold it in my hands, and I'm just gonna sneak up over to the window and take a little peek outside. All right. Phelan, just as you go up to the window, there is once more, bam, as a tiny pebble strikes the, the glass window, causing you to step back in alarm. And down below, you can see that robed woman staring back up at you. She gives you the shush gesture and gestures for you to, and gestures around the side of the house before scampering away. Well, I guess I will see what that's about. <laughs> All right, and now we move into another improv game with uh, Kayla as our <laughs> our victim. This game is called Sound Effects. Kayla, your co-stars are randomly going to provide sound effects as you attempt to sneak your way out of the house without waking anybody, and based, of course, on... Um, and we'll leave it to our judges to gauge whether or not they are treating uh, their party member fairly with the sound effects they choose to make. Um, and we will have you roll based on <laughs> what it sounds like is happening. So our first uh, noisemaker will be Curtis Cooper. So Kayla, that's me. you decide to see what that's about. You are currently in your room. What do you do? Um, I'm going to walk towards the door of the room and open the door. Step out. <laughs> trying to make a creaking sound. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm, tr I'm trying, but it's not coming out. <laughs> a creak. <laughs> <laughs> Phelan, believe it or not, it sounds like the door itself actually says creak. Give me a stealth I mean, roll, please. I've seen that before. I know what it is. This, this house is made out of people. I'm not staying here no more. Nope. God. Uh, okay. Vlas is having his house is made of people dream again. He's having the night terror. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> Phelan. The door literally creaks open, but it seems like the house is still quiet. You are now looking out from the second floor on into a long hallway with a banister overlooking the main floor. Between you and the main door, there are all the bedrooms of your sleeping companions, a rather long staircase, and the <coughs> front door, along with a few other mishaps along the way. 
Or you could go down the darkened corridor to the window at the far end of the house. Would you prefer the longer hallway or to test the stairs? Um, I think I'm going to test the stairs. All right. So, our next uh, musician, Kurt Combrick. <laughs> so, Kurt, this will be an easy one for you. So, Phelan passes the room of Vlas the Ass. Phelan, you hear some snoring that sounds like a pig might be drowning in mud. And you make your way along a rather creaky hallway floor. Phelan, okay. <laughs> you know there's a good chance you might have woken Vlas the ass up, so you, you leave stealth for a moment and whisper into the door that it was all just a bad dream. Asleep. It's Give me a real. persuasion check. It's just a bad dream. Vlas, you are lulled back to sleep you realize it was all just a dream. And Caitlin, you have made it to the stairs. Very good person. <laughs> and just as you attempt to go down the stairs, Ryan cuts in with his branch of sound effects. <laughs> Phelan, you look up to see a grandfather clock striking the fourth hour of the morning. And now give me a stealth roll as Grandfather Butler comes out to check on the clock. Wow. Phelan, you... He looks right at you, but you have blended into the shadows. This takes you back to your days as a hunter, stalking your prey through the forest when suddenly a large predator or something fierce in the shadows would suddenly loom out, looking to make you its prey. But the old cat simply stares on. It seems he might be sleepwalking, but Charlie will let us know for sure. It's 2.30, why do you say 4? There we go. Phelan, you know that time is running out. You have to make it out that door. The old cat does not seem like he is going back to bed and begins preparing mm -hmm. breakfast. Mm -hmm. So, hey, Gramps. Vanished. <laughs> you. I think, I think, um, Arid and, and Vlas, they took some of the sugar with them in their rooms. You can't make the pancakes without the sugar. I think you should go get it. Kayla, give me a deception check. As you attempt to convince this old cat that you are the voice in his own head. <laughs> Why don't you go, you should go get the stuff from the rooms? You can't make a good breakfast without all the ingredients. Let me know if you need help finding the... Right oh, back. I thought I hit it already. No, sorry. That's silly. 
There we go. Holy! <laughs> All right. Those so little scamps. <laughs> and Phelan, you press yourself back against the wall, blending in with yes. the statue. This is exactly the type of scenarios that led his father down down the path of debauchery. He would go and drink all of the alcohol and smoke the marijuana, and then he would just <laughs> take all of the sugar and candies, the bastard. All right, come on. Then. And Phelan, as this oh. doddering old cat folk saunters past you, you finally find a moment to escape out the front door, <laughs> and the quiet hinges glide closed, and the whole mechanism closes with a click. And there you are, uh, under the moon. <laughs> Thank you, Curtis. <laughs> and there you are, <laughs> under an early morning moon, with this stranger in a dark hood. She pulls her hood down, revealing a, a tied back gray hair. A woman who looks like she's seen many winters. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Well, it is the middle of the night, so you kind of mm. are. But Forgive I saw my you trespass. Early. Yes, I was trying to I heard what happened to your ship. I was there at the inn when your friend made the proclamation. And well mm. <clears throat> Ah, uh, I was hoping we might be able to assist one another. And what exactly do you mean by that? Well, I have been living on this island for some time under... She takes a deep breath and give me a perception check, Kayla. <coughs> As you can tell, something in her voice you can't quite put your finger on it, but she seems <clears throat> either distracted or bothered, or something is stopping her from getting it direct to the point. <clears throat> I need your help. I have been trapped on this island for a long time. I am trying to get home to my family. But if I reveal myself, Phelan, as you think about the society here, unfortunately you don't know too much about it. So you, while well, you're racking your mind as to, you know that these people are all sort of washed up from other places of the world, you, uh, you know you need to hear more before you can figure out what exactly is going on here. And so as she rambles on with her tale, she reveals, I am from a a far-off island. I want to get home to my family. But if I reveal myself, it might not be taken too kindly, and so I've been passing myself off as just another one washed ashore. But I fear that as time goes on, I may, one, be uncovered, and two, I may never get to see my family again. <clears throat> what do you mean by reveal yourself? Uh, Who are you? What are you? Give me a diplomacy check, please, Kayla. Yes. Well, before I... Well, that's the thing. I don't know if I can trust you. So I'm in a bit of a situation. I'm nearing the end of my rope, but I'm not ready to have my rope cut just yet. And do remember, everybody, uh, we are in the second act, and none of you have used your roses yet. Just wanted to remind you. I'm sorry, I don't Mr. know if Haberny. I can trust you. What? You got a rose. It was everybody but yeah, it was everybody but uh, Kurt, unfortunately, who got a rose from the. Yeah. Can I get two? No. Okay. <laughs> Not until we get an shot. audience. <laughs> 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 then audiences sorry, can get more sorry, roses. Sorry, sorry, sorry for breaking. So, she looks to you and says, oh, "I forget what she was about to say. God damn it." I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's not your fault. I'm the one who interrupted myself. Uh, well, we were talking about... I am your mother. <laughs> no, no. It is very evident she is human and not an elf. <laughs> but... She like... Her? First off, and you feel her eyes scrutinizing you quite a bit. 
and you um oh dear lord and with uh that roll you actually she rolled so poorly you actually uh <laughs> gain a success from that failing as she rambles on you realize she this is somebody who needs reassurance she you, it's almost like dealing with one of you know the creatures in the forest you have to give them throw them a little bit of food and over the course of a couple weeks eventually they become your animal companion you're getting that same need from this woman she needs to know that she can trust you listen lady i'm not here to hurt you i, I have no need to do that i can tell you definitely seem like you're having a tough time right now and if i have the ability to help you I would like to. Um, I, I'm i not from here. I'm not from around here. My companions aren't from around here. So it's an unfamiliar place to us. But we're also trying to leave here. So maybe by helping you out, um, we can reach a mutual goal of getting off this island together. She takes a deep breath. <clears throat> like, you're right. I, uh... It's not like I can screw myself any more than I already have, so... I was one of the occupying forces here from Iron World. The people here don't know me because I was stationed on one of the patrol ships around the way, and I did not condone what the Ironhold presence was doing here. And I'm afraid I came to realize it too late, but... I am hoping that I can find passage back to Ironhold before they discover my identity and have me hanged. Rune came to this manor by the decapitation and lynching of the occupying forces, and while in some light it might be considered very cruel what he did, I cannot defend what Ironhold did to these people. Moon, however, was very vengeful. No matter whether you were just a foot soldier, there were no excuses. I was a bosun on a boat. I thought I was just doing my job. I don't want to die. If you take me on your ship, I can help. I know my way around a boat. And I can even potentially help you through these woods, as I have, in an attempt to disguise who I was, I have had to live in these outskirts for some time. While I don't know the deepest areas, I do know my way around the logging trails and such. I can be of help to you. Well... We're in a bit of a situation ourselves right now in that we don't even have a functioning ship. So, we need to do something about that before I can help you. Um, and we were um, potentially talking um, with the leader here about doing something about this Lycanthorpe problem that's going on there. Do you know anything about that? Yes. It's got the whole town in uproar in an uproar. Sorry, being stranded here so long, my grammar is failing. I have never met the old ones of the forest, but I know the tales. As, well, sailors are known for their songs and their stories. I was able to entertain by telling some stories and having some stories told to me, and the innkeeper knows quite a bit about the, uh, the druids of the old wood. And... There is rumor that this is the druid's last laugh at the people of Lido's Island. For there was a war between them and the settlers here a very long time ago, but you'd have to hear the tale from him. Hmm. But please, if you... I do not need an answer now, but if you are willing to consider my offer, uh, meet me at the inn. I am there most nights. But for now, I must be off, as the morning light is going to, will soon grow, or will soon dawn, 
Like I said, my grammar is just... <clears throat> and I must be off. Please, think about it. I'll consider it. She bows gingerly, and she disappears into the night. Phelan, that morning dew is beginning to settle on the leaves around you as you... Your elf eyes notice that moment just when the sky turns from black to that first shade of blue, and you can smell the arrival of the dawn. And the gentle smell of pancakes wafting in from Rude's kitchen. And so, you all awake to find yourselves being summoned down for a lovely meal in the house of Rune. I actually like semi wreck on one thing. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would like to sleep outside. And I didn't hear the conversation. So I'm, okay. I'm still like during the nap, but I want to be outside. <laughs> All right. Pardon me, I just need to. Uh... We're having slept outside, at least. I hate when it does that as soon as things move. Pardon me, folks, I have to have a slight pause as a. Uh... <clears throat> I accidentally Sorry. did something important, it sounds like. Yeah, when. Uh... <laughs> Cameras get turned on and off. It shuffles the order. Sorry, check the check your chat, oh, please. That oh, will do. Uh, da, 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 yeah. Oh, sorry. Dramatic pause, everyone. Yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah. Sorry, I don't have. Uh, all right, yeah, Curtis, you uh, leave when you got to. Thank you for letting me know. But, uh, yeah, it, 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 they just, uh, they just popped it on me. I think it has something to do with me turning almost 40. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, actually, let's uh, give a moment. Uh, somebody had a birthday a couple days ago. Let's give an yeah. actor's dungeon. Happy birthday to Curtis Cooper! <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations, one year, uh, one more year out of your escape from the Utarian gulag that was your mother. Well done, sir. Another <laughs> circle around the sun. Why, thank you. <laughs> so it's good to know that I'm one year closer to the great box in the ground. All right. The eternal sleep, woo! <laughs> yes, the big sleep. Oh, good lord, this is, uh... Actors, the Actors Dungeon brought to you by Bagley's Funeral Home and Pizzeria. <laughs> Reminding you, with, we, don't ask remind, where we get the meat. reminding you with both our operations, if we're not on your doorstep in 30 minutes, you get to keep the box. Put <laughs> off another popper, woo! <laughs> Yesterday, one. Awesome. Nice. All right. All right. And is, Curtis, isn't it your birthday today? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, well, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy uh, early birthday. <laughs> From our two Curtis's. Curtis. Home in <laughs> <laughs> All right. Week. Now with that, we're so close some birthdays, you'd almost think that we're we're kind of the same person, maybe. Yeah, you almost can't tell apart. He's, he's, he's my brother from another it, mother. It's the it's hair resemblance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I I gave him my hair so that he can have those wonderful locks on his face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's very generous. Very generous. All right. I try. Before we get okay. uh, off track, uh, Curtis, it's uh, eight fifty-seven. So feel free to just <laughs> sign off there. Uh, yeah, you guys are going to hear a, a, a quick drop in music, most likely. The world Un went silent. Unless. Nah, okay. I, whatever happens, happens. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Sorry for the, the abrupt stop. Right, but I got to go. Yeah, okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Later, taters. Just, Bye. Just go. Leave us all here. <laughs> Alone. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't need to leave you, but I must. Uh -huh. Because there will be beer and steak. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, go. <laughs> yes. I feel so bad for you. can't compete with that. Yes, please. All right, guys. Love you all. Peace Cheers. out. Bye. Bye. All right. Uh, and just need to adjust my... Uh... One thing I don't like about Zoom is when it's in screen share mode, I can't like rearrange where people are. So if I quickly now shut off um, player, what is that? No. Um, player four. Okay, so player four is shut off, but now. 
Ah, oh, forget it. I'm just going to, um, so player, pardon, uh, bear with me, everybody, as I just, uh, do some rearranging. Oh. Alrighty, uh. Alright, so that's, uh, that's done. Uh, one day it would be great to have, uh, somebody who just runs the tech stuff so I can just focus on GMing. Alright, so, uh, we are going to go into, I don't think we need this battle music. Fight with the old lady. It depends on how intense this breakfast is. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna fight over the last pancake. We are going to go into uh, breakfast and then our last improv challenge of the night. Uh, so you guys are all up and uh, enjoying a nice breakfast as uh, the old cat folk um, seats you all at a lovely table and uh, sits you all down. And Look, I'm just, after I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that it was uh, that. It was you, you had your suspicions. Fine, I, it was just a little jarring. Someone waking up to someone going through my bag. And quite frankly, given the given the poshness of this entire house, if I was going to steal anything, it wouldn't be the sugar. So this I don't smells know. amazing. Do you remember how you were last night? Do not bring logic into this. No, that see. Have, I'll just, just ask I... maybe next time. Wait, so, somebody stole my bag of sugar out of my room last night. So eventually, as you are all enjoying uh, various, there is quite a buffet to be had here. Uh, different types of coffee, which is something you are very unused to. Uh, every type of tea that uh, you could think of. And uh, yeah, some uh, fresh bread, pancakes, uh, bacon, uh, eggs, just nicely done. And as Rune joins you, and he uh, begins smoking from a pipe, this is my breakfast blend. He, uh, he begins a monologue. And I will begin the monologue session. And then, um, one by one, our characters will do a uh, random monologue using these story cubes. Charlie is very familiar with the story cubes. So, the goal for monologues is you have to improvise a monologue. I am going to draw... These dice have random images on them. I am going to draw three, and I am going to tell you what the images are. Like, that is, for example, a beehive. I will tell you what they are. And you have to come up with a story or a, a, a dramatic monologue about your character and how it relates to these three images that we find. But for my monologue, it's just going to be a little bit of history about Leto's Island. You see this i know you noticed that people are uh pretty uh pretty generous about ignoring it but <coughs> yeah this house used to belong to uh the island master when ironhold set up shop here you see like several decades ago now when valorum tried to take the whole sea of storms ironhold decided they were going to fight back and well, for the longest time, we were all on Team Ironhold. Like, come on, that's the best chance we got. But they uh, they kind of overstayed their welcome. And after Valorum was pushed back, well, they stuck around. And we used to be known far and wide for our, you know, lumber. Lido's Island, uh, you know, Lido's used to mean lumber in, uh, I don't even know what language it is anymore. But, you know, rumors has it that that's how it got its name. And... So we were, you know, shipbuilders, and that's why Ironhold needed us, because our island is in a strategic position to block uh, trade with uh, the eastern continent and uh, the forests of Taloran. So, hey, we were the choice, and, well, this was all before my time, but it's stories that my dad told me, and you know, him and my family apparently tried to rise up after Ironhold wouldn't relinquish the spot and just, you know, raided these forests we used to have the practice uh it was called uh Desagi. it was something that you know rumor has it ages ago one of the first settlers here was from far east and he showed the uh, the other settlers how to let a tree grow lumber without damaging the tree and well they just took the whole tree and they built a ton of ships and when i tried to fight back when i was a kid uh, 
they almost killed me. They just threw me into the ocean. So I take a little rough to pirates because pirates were the ones who picked me up. And you do not want to be a straight cat folk on a pirate ship full of orcs. So I grew up a little rough around the edges. And, but I swore that one day I'd come back and eventually I made enough friends. So we took that ship. It was just a schooner, but it had one gun and that was enough for us. And well, came back to Lido and we got rid of Ironhold. We chased him out every last damn one of them. Just wish I could have done that before so many families were torn apart. You know, Ironhold, they've got a iron grip on this sea and that's why we haven't asked for help about the lycanthropes we're an independent nation now not loyal to Valorum, not loyal to Ironhold we're our own people and we are not going to let them get another foothold here <laughs> so if you think and he looks to you Phelan if you think that you can talk to this forest and get them to back off I'll give you your ship back and um you promised them a battleship, so... I'll do what I can to make sure that it's, you know, better than how we found it. Battleship. And Phelan, with that, he looks to you. As if he's expecting you to say something. And so, you have to... Your story cubes will involve a sloth... A frog or a toad and a robot or in D D or Pathfinder terms an automaton usually made by gnomes or dwarves sloth toad automaton fire away <coughs> well I, I do come from the forest born and raised there very long time very familiar with the woods and very familiar with speaking with the woods um, including the trees and all its creatures. Um, you know, I've had, I've been traveling for a little while now, so I've traveled to different kinds of woodlands and forests and had different encounters with different kinds of creatures in nature. Back home, it was more of simple wildlife, I would say. Things you would expect, like deer, the foxes, the frogs, and that's what I'm most familiar with. But over over my adventures, I've definitely encountered some different types of creatures. Um, there was this one kind of creature I saw in the forest before. It used to move. It would move so very slow. And it was so fascinating to watch it because it just moved so slow and it didn't seem like there was any purpose to it. But when you spend a lot of time among nature, you learn to learn from nature. And so you see all these different kinds of creatures and their different, their different habits, their different ways of living. And they've all kind of stuck with me and have helped me grow. Um, so I do have a lot of different experiences to draw from that might, um, that might let me be able to assist you with your lycanthrope problem, uh, even though I've never really encountered a lycanthrope itself. Um, what was that? Sorry, what was that? <laughs> the uh, robot, the what did you say? Uh, um, uh, automaton. Or you can call it a robot if automaton. you want. Yeah. Okay, I just, yeah, I was gonna say robot, but then I was like, yeah, it's like, robot! <laughs> um, <laughs> right, different kinds of creatures in the forest. Um, um, yes, I've never really encountered lycanthorps before. Um, they're unfamiliar to me, like, a lot of the tools and technologies of civilization are still quite unfamiliar to me. I remember one time passing through the forest and there's just this mechanical creature. I don't even know what it was, but it was made out of metal and it was wow. big, shiny, and loud. And it was scaring away all the creatures, all the animals who were living in the forest. 
And so I decided to track it and follow it because if there's anything in the forest that's disturbing the forest, then I'm going to do everything in my power to get rid of it because the forest is sacred and anything that disturbs it should be removed. Um, so I was able to track it and there's these like humans who are like controlling it and saying they they called it like an automaton or something. I don't even remember exactly. But... Automatons. And at that point, Rune kind of nods like, not the closest island from Lido's, uh, Bronze Bluff. It's where the gnomish inventors work. They've got automatons. That's neat. Ah, please continue. <laughs> um, yeah, that was the only time I've ever encountered something like that. So, I But mean... I get what you're saying. You've encountered all these different things. <laughs> Frogs, slow things, sloths, you said, and automatons, and... I get you. If you can handle them, you can handle anything. You I'm can sure handle you. this problem. I get you. And then he looks to you, Mac. I hope you enjoyed your sleep outside, by the way. And... Mac, so your prompts are this child holding toys. It can either be you as a child or a, some other child holding toys. A chess piece or a game piece of your choice. And a blimp or a ship. <laughs> I hope you were comfortable sleeping outside, man. Where are those sky ships? This is, this is an actual question to the DM. Does the world have sky ships? Yes, it does. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess it was okay. I I haven't really slept outside since like when I was a kid, and sometimes the 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 other kobolds would be like, "Ah, uh, Mac, you gotta leave," and then I'll be like, "Okay," and then um, you know, eventually I I grew up and they started respecting me a lot more when when I got uh, inches, so I gotta pull my hair real quick. I got inches, and he, he, he's like kind of a really big deal in our tribe, and you know, I, he tells me some things sometimes, and um, you know, I, I started to, to actually start bonding with people, and he would, he play games with me sometimes, uh, and I, I wasn't really sleeping outside because they just, they just let me in, and you know, I got a chance to, to talk with people and play games, and I, I learned what a board was. I didn't know that before, because they always, like, kept them away from me. They're like, oh, Mac, you're gonna eat them, and then I never ate them. I, I have some standards. I have some dignity. I mean, and she's kind of told me, like, you know, Mac, please don't do that. And I'm like, oh, okay, sure. Because a part of it was him, but sometimes it was a it was a group effort. And uh, Also, while I was outside, I, I think I saw, like, a, a big sky ship pass over. It was like a boat put in the air, and it, like, was inflated like a ball. It was pretty scary a little bit, but, you know, sometimes it's nice sleeping outside. Wow. I've heard of Bronze Bluffs having <laughs> some sort of sky boat, but I've only ever heard of one. <coughs> it's fascinating. You're a new kid, you know that? Are you a kid or are you an adult? I'm like 30 years old. <laughs> God, that's all right. Crazy. All right, all right, all right. And, uh, Aridin, what's to you? You seem to have a good head about your shoulders, uh... What's up with you? What the hell is this? Oh, okay. It's, uh, a character of a man with a thought bubble above his head. So, Aridin, um... Okay. A thought? <laughs> and here we have two buddies kind of, uh, holding each other over the shoulder. So, uh, a thought, Aww. something about a buddy, and I don't know if this is a happy face or just kind of like a content face it's like not quite happy not quite neutral feeling all right so a feeling of yeah all right a buddy and a thought good head on my shoulders <laughs> uh, many things i have been accused of having that has never been one of them i was um raised by a pair of adventurers myself and my twin and I always wanted to pick up the mantle, always wanted to be the next shield bearer, always wanted to, to go off adventuring. I could not for the life of me focus on farm work. 
I would rather be flayed alive. Um, <clears throat> but my brother, Oberon, I remember um, we were inseparable. He would always, for some reason, farm work he just thoroughly enjoyed. He ended up doing my chores, and I would, I would go off and train, and, and I'd come back, and of course I'd be sweating, and he would just quickly throw me a, uh, throw me a shovel or pick out some whatever the hell we were doing that day, and make it look like I was working. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why that thought came to me. I guess I've just always been lucky with people around me. They always seem to um, have my back, and I think that's something that my father tried to teach me, was to try to surround yourself with the best type of people. And while I'm not entirely sure of last year, <coughs> um, the rest of them have more than proven themselves out of it. My ass. <laughs> uh, big strong half-orc like you, only adequate. Uh, you seem like you got a story or two. Vlas, oddly suiting for your um, class, a keyhole. A tent or TP or camp. <laughs> and a submarine or something that involves going underwater, we'll say. So, keyhole, tent, submarine, or underwater. As you will. You know what? You remind me of my first ex girlfriend. She, uh, she was a kind of person, too, and she had about just as many personalities as she did lives. The bitch was crazy. The only reason I met her was because I broke into her house. I couldn't get I couldn't get the lockpick to work right, so I just kind of smashed in the lock, the door handle and everything, let myself in. God, she was crazy, but it was... Uh, anyways. Wait, so uh, you broke into her house, and she was the crazy one? Sorry, uh, c continue. Yeah, she was. But anyways, no, I spent most of my life, you know, living in tents, living out in the forest. Which I think is kind of funny, because not a lot of stuff in here makes sense in the fort, in your forest and everything. You can clearly tell, I've been around whenever people push stuff back. Creatures, woodland creatures, lycanthropes, which I, I've, I've, I've wrestled with lycanthropes too. A short, a short fence is uh, not very adequate against them, I think. But anyways, yes, I've lived in tents. I've lived in tents made out of wood. I've lived in tents made out of cloth. I've lived in tents made out of pantyhose. That, that took a lot to make. But anyways... Trying to remember what else I was going to. Oh, right. I spent a lot of time. You'd be surprised just how many people hate you when you're a half work. You can't get on a boat. I can't swim for crap. But luckily, though, I just sink straight to the bottom. I can't tell you how many times I traveled between island to island just with something on my back, a little bit of air going through. It's a whole different world down there. All kinds of riches. Fascinating. Yeah. Half orc walking on the bottom of the sea, or maybe a lake. I don't know where you were thrown overboard, but. All right. Listen, I gotta go. You guys are welcome. My uh, grandfather here will uh, see that you've uh, eaten your fill, and uh, when you guys are ready, please, uh, uh, please come find me down at the inn, and we'll uh, we'll uh, settle things up. But I've got to go make an appearance and. Uh, I know we sent word already that no more work is going to happen. Uh, come to your boat, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll go down there and maybe see about. We'll go talk uh, to some of the local smiths and vendors, and I'll give you guys a chance to make sure you're well stocked for the trip. Um, and he quickly downs the rest of his coffee. Uh, gentlemen, uh, Miss, it was truly my pleasure, my honor, <coughs> knowledge to host you in my home. Sorry. And you guys, he's looking at the clock when he says that. And he bows, and then he bows again. And as you're thinking, oh, maybe it's a double bow. No, he realized, he, it's obvious he forgot that he already bowed. And he scampers off. And that is where we will end tonight's session. Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, we don't have uh, much time. I want to, I don't want to keep... Uh, people longer than I promised, so we will go right into our judges' <laughs> final answers, starting with Christina. All right, would you like me to just go straight forward and give you the numbers? Um, no, it's, uh, it's your moment. Say whatever you would like, as much as you would like, as little as you would like. Um, <laughs> it's all you. Um, 
okay, okay. There was a lot of different character work that was done today. It was really joyful. So I'm going to start, let's see, I'll start this time and I'll do Ryan, Kayla, Kurt, and Charlie, since I went Charlie, Kurt, Kayla, Ryan the last time. So Ryan, you ended with 12 points. Yeah. Um, your highest scoring was making me laugh. I think I laughed so many times. I don't think you're surprised by that. You probably get like the, the highest comedy numbers, usually, I'm assuming. Um, you were also really strong in staying in characters. At that one point where you were asking about the dirigibles or whatever the, the flying air <laughs> balloon things, and you asked in character, and Mike didn't realize that you were asking the DM a question because you did it in character. That is that is commitment, my friend. That is Yay. commitment. Um, so fantastic job. Um, Kayla, you definitely grew a lot more in that last read. I really enjoyed that. Um, your final number is at a six, so it's a little bit lower. I found that your highest was in contributing to the scene um, because whenever you did speak, it was contributing. But again, it's you have a lot of really loud, very comedic guys in the group. So in order to punch in with a lot of strength, you gotta, and they're talking, take advantage of your silent moments. Like, bridge it up however you say it. Really channel into that character. And if you're gonna be that silent one, like, be the silent one, right? But like in that, I loved hearing you when you spoke. It always had something that drove the story forward a little bit more, like in Trange, and I loved that. Um, Kurt, you landed at a 12, so I really did have Ryan and Kurt at a tie. Um, Yay. Your strongest was, you had a tie between staying in character and contributing to the scene. Those are both at threes. Um, because you just, you kept your character when you spoke. Your ability to channel that gruff and hold on to it. And when something happened to someone else, you interacted with them, and you reacted in a way that was very in character. Um, and then you always contributed to the scene. You always had something to say, whether it be commenting on um, Charlie's character being super high. Like you always had these little snide comments that you popped in there that were always in character that were really nice. Um, and Charlie, you topped it out with a 16 points for me. Um, I gave you a four in staying in character. So you got the holy shit number. Um, so I have, two whole, I have two holy shits in there. I have a holy shit for Ryan for making me laugh, and I have a holy shit for you for staying in character. Because even when you weren't speaking, like I said during the halfway point, you just you stayed so solid. Like I was almost like, oh my gosh, he's giving me such paladin vibes. Like you're just you have such a self righteous character who's trying to not be self righteous when he interacts with people, and that came across any time that you spoke. Um, you. Everything else was great. Um, yeah. So you guys all did such a great job. This was so enjoyable, and I loved hearing how different all of your characters were. I've been in a lot of games where everyone tried to be the funny character. And in this, when you weren't being funny, you were being funny. And when you were being funny, you were being funny without trying. So you guys all did such a great job today. So Yay. good job. Okay. Thank you very so, much, uh, uh, Christina. And now on to Tom. Sorry, Tom, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 no. <laughs> I need to shut up and wait my turn. I'm so sorry. No, um, I was, all I was doing was going to say, hey, it's your turn. So <laughs> you no, I'm so sorry. Uh, so, Kayla, um, I have actually you maxed out for your interaction with the uh, mysterious old woman. Uh, okay. Given your character's prompts that we got off the character sheet, you were so in character. And from a DM po point of view, that's going to make us perform more. And the biggest thing is you were being super guarded and non-committal. Those were the two things on your character sheet that just, I wanted to see how you were going to explore that from a DM point of view. And just, yeah, you, you knocked it out of the park with that one. Um, Charlie, I also have you, you, you maxed out, dude. This character, this whole entire session, has just been the type of character you as a DM dream of going up against. Because just in your in your in that small monologue where you had to pick the cubes, you were giving us backstory. You were giving a DM all the ammo they need to to, to that absolutely plot. Um, Kurt, just I love that how you justified walking underwater. Like, yeah, the treasure under there, it's all mine now. Like, just little things <laughs> like that are just so enjoyable because it's like, okay, you know, to self, they're a klepto. I'm going to use that next time. And then, of course, Ryan. Um, it's going to sound mean, but but I don't mean, mean it to be mean because it's one of the things I love the most about your character. Your story went absolutely nowhere. <laughs> just, I, I, I adore that about your character so much. Uh, but my top two for this session, though, are Charlie and Kate. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Tom. I'm just quickly uh, giving the everybody there, uh, translating their scores into gold <coughs> and silver and copper. Gold. But uh, yeah, so um, we will, uh, before we sign off, um, 
This has been the Actors Dungeon. Please do consider dropping us uh, a subscription, a like, a comment. All of that stuff does help us grow. And we are, I can't speak for everybody, but I know a good few of us are starving actors who would love just to entertain you. And, well, every little bit helps in the life of a streamer. And I would like to open it up first to our judges if they have any uh, social media presences or um, anything that they would love to plug to our audience member. Thank you, member, for sticking with us throughout the entire broadcast. I don't know who you are, but I love you. Thank you. It's your mom. It could very well be my mom. I don't know. Got him. Thanks, Mike's mom. I call me. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, Christina, Tom, if there's uh, any plugs you want or any... Uh, Anything that they can uh, check out of yours online, feel free to uh, quickly drop a plug if you'd like. You are not obligated to if you don't want to. Um, well, if you could see how my name is spelled, it's that.com. Um, otherwise, it's like it's difficult to spell, so it's that.com. And then you'll hear me in an upcoming gold edition of House Flipper, which is on Steam. Nice. Oh, wow, okay. Nice. All right. And so, yeah, I will uh, end it here then. Unless, sorry, also our cast members, if you've got anything you'd like to uh, share with our audience, by all means, please feel free. I do not want to hog the microphone. No, I'm good. Hey! Right. Follow my Twitter at GuysMister. It's my last name, but M I S T E R instead of just E R. Follow me on Twitter at Barack Obama. Hey, what? <laughs> <laughs> Funny, I follow Barack. I had no idea that was you. The, that's my alt account. Oh, okay. The best thing about Kayla is that you will randomly drop shit like that, and everyone's like, <laughs> "Is she serious?" <laughs> I don't know whatever work you've had done, but you look great. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> well, it can't get any stranger than this. So we will end it here. Thank you all for joining our lovely show. Uh, Thanks for running it. Yeah. Yay! Good night, everybody. We're ending the stream. Good night, everyone.